What's everybody? Real quick video today because uh, Raven surprises with another update this week. They updated some things for Iron Trials as well as another Weapons and Attachments Pass. Um, some good changes, I think, but let's go ahead and get into it. So, in Iron Trials, they now have added Specialist Tokens to Buy Stations. I don't like that. Iron Trials is supposed to be hard. That just makes it easier, and I'm just not a fan. Um, supply Run Discounts are now 50% on every item except Team Redeploy 100%, so still free buybacks. Uh, loadout drop markers are actually now discounted 10%, which is different than usual. And specialist token is now discounted 10%. The hardline perk gives a 25% discount to every item except self-revive, which is only 20%. Loadout drop marker 10% and specialist token 10%. I don't think you'll see people running hardline, but you might since everything's more expensive and there's less money. This could be a good perk to run instead of like ghost, high alert, tempered, whatever you run in uh, Iron Trials. We suspect very few people will be able to say they purchased the specialist token. However, we do feel there is an opportunity to provide higher tier players with additional impactful outlets for their hard earned resources. Additionally, further enabling purchasing power with hardline is something we would like to continue to explore. Uh, contracts, recon now gives you 1100 instead of 1300. Scavengers now down from 25 to 1600. Bounties down from 38 to 2500. And supply runs down from 1300 to 1200. We recognize that this may be a polarizing change, but we feel it is a necessary one. When we gate access to loadouts behind a large price tag, as is the as is the case, we force players to continue moving around the map. This works to de-incentivize de camping. While we do not anticipate this change will have a large impact on the most skilled players, those who stay put and avoid engagements will find themselves resource strained and quickly falling behind. This is part of how we subtly encourage map movement and fighting. Additionally, we feel scavenging, being resourceful, and barely scraping by is part of what adds to the charm and intensity of the trials. This dynamic makes room for and emphasizes other facets of skill like movement, teamwork, strategy, and map knowledge. By delaying loadout acquisition, we are further smoothing out player power such that each increase to it is much more noticeable and allows more room for those secondary skill sets to shine. We will be monitoring the mode and player feedback closely to ensure this change is having the intended effect. I like that this is their long-winded way of saying play the game don't camp i like that they're addressing camping even if it's only in iron trials at least we know what's on their mind and hopefully the new map and some changes hopefully coming to core br will continue to de-incentivize camping as they uh did with these changes gulag lmgs except the rpd and all tactical rifles have been removed from gulag loadouts we, we feel an emphasis on submachines and assault rifles better suits this version of the gulag I like it because people have been moving around more in the Iron Trials Gulag um, because uh, because you can't camp and win. You have to actually have gun skill and win, and submachine guns and assault rifles are definitely better in that situation than uh, LMGs and TAC rifles. Melee weapons no longer deal more than 120 damage per melee hit. That's nice because one time I hit a guy twice in the face with a sledgehammer, and he still downed me by uh, meleeing me with his... Revolver, and I just think that's bullshit, and I think they should make this change across all modes. Loot, armor, satchel, gas mask, and self-revive drop rates have been reduced. Ground loot XM4 attachments have been updated. Ground loot bullfrog attachments have been updated. The XM4 and bullfrog attachments are now more closely aligned with popular builds. I wish they'd start doing that with the blueprints in the store, but I'm glad they are making these more viable uh, off the ground in Iron Trials. Bug fixes, fix collision issues, and various elements on Rebirth Island. Fix an issue with the bullfrog that reduced recoil while firing. Wasn't even aware of this bug. But they need to fix the bug audio on whatever variant is banned in tournament stuff right now. Bullfrog. Bullfrog gets a nerf. Uh, ADS speed decreased, movement speed decreased, and ADS movement speed decreased. This is significant, especially this ADS speed decrease. I still think it'll be a really good gun. It still has the same damage. You just, I guess, can't be as aggressive with it. The Bullfrog is a true jack of all trades. It has great mobility, effective damage range, handling, and base magazine capacity, which would often act as a free attachment. These changes in conjunction with the recoil bug fix will bring the Bullfrog much closer to the competition. Shotgun Bravo. Thank you, God, that this is getting nerfed. I'm so glad this is the Gallo. I've seen the Gallo too much. Apparently, it's it has completely unramped it in like the Brazilian servers, and it's become a huge problem. It's not a high skill weapon. There's not a counter to it. I'm really glad to see this nerf. And they significantly nerfed the damage range from 4.5 to 3 for the first. For the second damage range, 8.1 to 5.5. Third damage range decreased from 13.2 to 9.9. .9. So it's a complete barrel stuff weapon now. I think this is a good change. I think if you nerf the damage at all or even the fire rate, it would be completely unusable. But this still makes it usable. It's just if you run into a building, you won't immediately die unless you're right face to face. 
uh, with the opponent, and you can outshoot him with like an OTS nine, a Cold War MP five, nail gun, anything that kills fast is an SMG. The shotgun Bravo has been incredibly dominant due to its effective damage range, magazine capacity, mobility, and rate of fire. By reducing its effective damage range, the shotgun Bravo will begin to feel more like a shotgun and less like a sniper. This is a great change. Uh, barrels, Krig 6. All of the takedown, the Ranger, the Contour, and the mil spec barrels all had their recoil control increased up by 1%. The Krig still is shooting absolute marshmallows, absolute pillows, so I don't think this really matters. But if you're going to nerf the damage, you definitely shouldn't have nerfed uh, the recoil on it. Given the Craig's most recent adjustments, we felt it was appropriate to increase the effectiveness of its recoil attachment slightly. AK-47, recoil control decrease for the takedown liberator, uh, reinforced, and Spetsnaz RPK barrel. Uh, just down either 0.5 or 1%. Not a huge change, but enough that this weapon will feel a little shakier. I definitely thought after they adjusted the kick in the last update that this gun felt way too smooth for how quickly it kills. Uh, XM4, same thing. Around 1.3 to 1.5 percent, and 1 percent for both recoil controls on the Task Force barrel. Once again, XM4 felt really easy to use, considering it was a good jack of all trades weapon. Um, I don't think it necessarily needed this nerf because it wasn't like the AK-47 that got its recoil uh, adjusted and felt way too smooth. I thought the XM4 was actually in a really good place, um, but I think it'll still be usable. It'll just be a higher skill weapon at range. But that's today's update. I will have the, this link down below as well as my social media. So please feel free, feel free to visit those. But uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more. And I will see you in Verdansk on Rebirth Island. Get frying. Have a good day. Bye.